Please. <gasps> the F word and travel. With an HSBC Global Money account, you can drop f- from Acapulco to Zurich. That means no f- here. Bonjour. No f- here. Howdy. And definitely no fees here. Pay no HSBC fees overseas with a global money account. HSBC UK. Opening up a world of opportunity. Available to HSBC UK customers with an eligible current account. Exclude some accounts such as the HSBC Basic Bank account. For mobile banking app users only. Non-HSBC fees may apply. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection. Behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hey there, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, We are going to talk today about pre-production. What happens before the audiobook production begins? We're going to talk about how and why to prep your manuscript for audiobook production. And I'm going to cover a lot of different things within this. And we're going to spend less time on the why. So maybe I'll just start there for you. Why do we want to prepare our manuscripts in advance? Uh, You might be thinking that all you need, well, you've already written the book, it's published, what are you going to do? You're going to provide the script to the audiobook producer or the narrator and just have them record it, right? Well, a lot of people, actually most people, assume that, and that's the way they approach production. But what we're going to take a look at in this episode is some of the things that you'll miss out on when you choose to approach it with that mindset. Because there are always opportunities in your audiobook that you can leverage your audiobook to help you with your overall goals. So one thing, it's helpful to know what those goals are. What's your big picture? And I'm not going to get into that today. I had did some recent episodes on that at the beginning of the year. And so I'll let you head over to those episodes for that kind of content. But What I want to say about the why a little bit more is that when we do something with intention and with clarity, we're going to get a better result. I think that's generally true about most things in life. Certainly, I think it is true in the audiobook production world. So I think that by the end of this episode, you will also have a clearer idea of why you might want to prepare Now, most audiobook producers and narrators, they may ask you some questions about the manuscript, which is mostly going to involve like, which parts am I reading and which parts am I not? And that it's kind of left at that as like, that's the, that's the whole thing. But there's so much more. There's more opportunity and um, there is more, there are more things to consider. So let's dive into what some of those are. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to talk a little bit about casting. And the reason is because that is a part of the pre-production process. And even though we're mostly going to talk about manuscript preparation, the casting of the voice or voices is a part of this early looking at the manuscript. So when I first review a manuscript for production, uh, I'm looking at a lot of different things. One of the first things I'm looking at is the the voice for the manuscript or voices. So I'm, I'm asking myself as I'm looking at it, what would be the most appropriate voice or voices for this text? Is it most appropriate that it sound like it is, you know, a female voice or a male voice or somewhere else on that spectrum? Um, because we don't assume it has to be one or the other, right? So we're really trying to get a feel for what's the most appropriate voice for this audiobook. There are a lot of different qualities of the voice. I'm going to get into that less in this particular episode. But I'm also looking to answer the question whether this particular manuscript will be best served with a single voice, with multiple voices, 
or with a whole cast, like a full cast of narrators that are doing the dialogue in the book. Or, uh, and when I say multi-voiced, as opposed to full cast, really what I'm referring to are books that maybe the um, point of view for different chapters is different. And so we may want different voices for each of the point of view chapter personas. So that would be one approach. Or we may be looking at a nonfiction book that involves testimonials, for example, that might be better off in different voices. So there are lots of different reasons. But that's one of the things that I'm looking at is to figure out what do we need in terms of the voice or voices for this to be the best audiobook that it can be. Okay, now when I start getting into the manuscript itself, this is where we're going to focus mostly in this episode. One of the things I'm looking for are images. Are there images and what are they? So if there are like tables and graphs, things like that, that's going to suggest one kind of approach, which might be a description of what the image is trying to communicate visually or making sure that it is well communicated within the narrative that already exists. And I'm also looking at whether we want to make it possible for the listener to be able to go to the author's website to see the visual. That could be really helpful. Let's say if it's like a table or something, and we can communicate the basic idea, but listening to a big table of statistics would be terribly boring and hard to understand, I think. Still, we want to be able to provide the listener with the content We just want it in an appropriate way. Now, here's the cool thing about things like putting a visual on your website that relates to or is from your audiobook. If your listener is interested in seeing it visually, where are they going to go? To your website. Isn't that a great thing? Don't you want your listeners to come to your website? Of course you do. So, That way they get to learn more about you. Maybe they'll sign up for your newsletter. Maybe they'll get some other book that you've got. Inviting your listeners to your website for a good reason is a really smart thing to do. Okay. All right. So I talked about like graphs and images and charts and things like that. What about if you have photographs? Same kind of thing, except you're probably not going to describe them. You might say who you know, that there isn't a photo of this person. Maybe it's a memoir or something. Or maybe you have, you just want to make one statement somewhere in the audiobook that uh, for photos that are included in the print book, you can go to the website to see them at this specific page. So that would be a way that you might deal with photographs. And in that case, You might not, uh, it really depends on the book, but you might not have a statement for every time a photo appears. You might just have one general statement, maybe near the end of the book or maybe near the beginning, whichever feels like is most appropriate. And that is going to be based on, do we think our listeners are going to want to know in advance that they can go look at those photos along the way? Maybe we do. It really depends on the content. Okay, so other kinds of visuals. You might have, uh, you know, cartoons in your book or something. And those may not be best described, uh, or maybe they would be. And then you, but again, inviting people to your website, always a good thing. So as I'm looking at a manuscript, I'm looking at images. Now, sometimes people, authors will put in images that are really just put in there to create visual interest in the print manuscript. And in those cases, there is no need to mention them or do anything about them. You just ignore them, omit them. So we're looking at what the images are, what the message of the images are, 
and then figuring out what's going to be the best way to handle each one. Here's why it's good to know how to handle each one before you start production. You, as author, you might think that the narrator is just obviously going to omit all those or make some other assumption. You may think that somehow, sort of magical thinking, because not everyone is recognizing, I know this only from conversations with authors who talk to me about, well, then about people being able to see something in their audiobook and because they're just not thinking it through in the moment about, oh, no, it's, it's audio only. It's not an audio visual experience. We can create those, but that's not what an audiobook is. So back to my point, you may be making some assumption about what the narrator or producer is going to do when they bump up against one of these visual elements in your manuscript, and maybe they end up just omitting it or whatever, but now maybe you have missed out on a really great opportunity. Wouldn't it be nice to know exactly what's going to be included in your audiobook and to look at all the possible ways that you could make this the very best listener experience ever? You should be thinking about that. Okay, we're going to take just a short pause, and then we're going to come back and talk about some of the other manuscript elements that I'm looking for and looking at and figuring out when I approach a manuscript for pre-production. Here at Pro Audio Voices, we love working with authors who have a big goal in mind. They really want to reach out to their audience around the world. We're here to help make that happen. It starts with our pre-production process, where we're evaluating and determining what elements of the audiobook we can leverage to both create an excellent listener experience for your listeners, as well as drawing them to your website to engage with you further. It continues on through the production process, making decisions that will enhance and support your big goals, as well as creating a great listener experience. But we don't stop there. Once the audiobook is live, we move on to helping you market your audiobook with the Audiobook Marketing Program. Come check us out at ProAudioVoices.com. To schedule a call to talk about your audiobook project, click on Get Started. Okay, so coming back to manuscripts and what are the elements that I'm looking at and then how am I thinking about how we're going to approach those? during pre-production for an audiobook. All right. One of the first things I'm looking for after the pieces I already discussed, so one of those is front matter. And that might be testimonials, like advance praise, disclaimers, acknowledgements, things like that. Now, some of those, the testimonials, typically we just omit those or record them for use in social media or something, but we don't include them in the audiobook. But if it would be valuable to have them in recorded form so that you could use them in social media, and you like that idea, wouldn't that be cool? Well, you see, if you don't think of that ahead of time for production, your narrator is not going to read it. All right, so moving on. Disclaimers. You may have a disclaimer that feels important to you, especially if you have, let's say, like a medical or psychological related text, and you want to make sure the disclaimer's in there. But it's really just for legal purposes. Maybe that's all you're really putting it in there for. In that case, you should just move it to the end of the audiobook so it's not in the way of your listener getting started. If you have acknowledgments in the front of the book, and you want them included, which is totally fine, I will recommend moving them to the end of the audiobook as one of the last things, because most likely people are going to just consider it done when they get to that point and not listen to your acknowledgments. So you want to make sure that they're not going to just, you know, jump ship before you're ready for them to. I'm also looking at, at the back matter. You're about the author. Do you have one? You should. And it should be narrated. That's my opinion. I know that not everyone has that opinion, but oh my gosh, 
why would you want to deprive your listener of an easy way to know how to learn more about you? What else have you written? What else do you have to offer? Maybe they want to sign up for your newsletter. I think it's a shame when the about the author gets omitted. And if you don't have one, write one, because you should have one. You may have acknowledgments at the end. That's the appropriate place. But do you want to record them or not? It's sort of a 50-50 in my experience as to whether an author wants those narrated. And again, completely optional. Now, you may also have things like appendices, resources, bibliography, a glossary. There's all kinds of things that we put at the end in the back matter of the book. What's important here is figuring out how each of those will be managed and handled in the production process. Which pieces will be recorded? Sometimes there are appendices that are very appropriate to record. Sometimes they're really not appropriate for recording. Some of the other things that you can do in terms of handling that back matter, I'm specifically referring to things like appendices, and there are such a variety of appendices that it's hard to even address them, except to say that you'll want to figure out whether you want that material in the audiobook. When you have this kind of back matter, I do recommend that you create a place on your website, and it doesn't have to be one that you have a link to in your main menu, in which case, if you do kind of hide it in that way, it won't be easy to find. But if you tell your listeners in the audiobook which page directly, what the URL is to go to to get the audiobook resources, then that is, again, a way to bring them to your website, invite them over. And then on that page where you have your audiobook resources, do make sure that on that page you have links, like you include the main menu on your website, so that they can then go explore other things that you may have to offer. I'm just suggesting that you don't need to have it go from your main website. You don't need necessarily need a link to your audiobook resources. Okay, so then I'm also thinking about would there be some valuable bonus material? For example, if the book is part of a series and there's another book that follows this one, absolutely, we want to include at least a little snippet, just a taste. Does it matter if that book is already in audio or not? Is it a problem if it's not in audio yet? Nope, that's not a problem. The point is to get them hungry for that content, that material. Okay. Now, if you're putting this one in this particular book, your book in audio, and you have a sequel to the book, I do recommend that you get it into audio, but it doesn't have to be right off the bat when you include that sneak preview. Another favorite thing of mine to include as bonus material is a part of an interview. You as an author can be interviewed by, you know, your narrator potentially if they're up for it, or maybe you have some fellow professional, some colleague that might be willing to interview you. Maybe you have high quality audio from an interview that you have already done. All of that works. Uh, when you work with us at Pro Audio Voices, often I will do an interview You've probably heard some of them on the podcast. So those are ways then you can put the first part of the interview in as bonus material in your audiobook and then invite people to your website to hear the full interview. There are other things that you can do as well, but these are just a few ideas. And to give you an idea in this episode of how I approach the pre-production review of a manuscript and the kinds of things that I'm looking for and that that we at Pro Audio Voices pay a lot of attention to. Because when you pay attention to this degree, to this level, put this much thought and care into the pre-production process, then you have the potential, you are building the potential 
for great things to come as a result of your audiobook. You're creating your audiobook uh, not only as a great product itself, a great experience for your listener, but also you are leveraging your audiobook to help you achieve your bigger goals. And I will leave it there for now. So I hope this episode has been of help to you. If you would like to support my work here on, on Audiobook Connection, I invite you to become a, a supporter at patreon.com slash audiobook connection podcast. We'd love to have you join us in that way. And uh, you can subscribe to the podcast. We love having our subscribers uh, be part of our journey. If there are topics of interest that you would like me to cover, if you have specific questions, I would be happy to have you email us at AC, that's for Audiobook Connection, AC at ProAudioVoices.com. And I hope you will continue following what we're posting and the work that we're doing here. And then if you do already have an audiobook, just a reminder, if you are not already on Amplify Audiobooks with your audiobook, that you are missing out. And I encourage you to go to AmplifyAudiobooks.com and learn more there about how you can get your audiobook earning more for you, where you can have more control and build your community and following. If you are an audiobook listener, please check out AmplifyAudiobooks.com. It is like the Etsy of audiobooks. And when you purchase audiobooks there, you are having a greater impact with your spending dollars and really supporting indie authors and small publishers. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.